Why do you need a good music system? Because playing your favorite music through a good music system, it can refresh and mend your soul. It can rejuvenate you when you feel tired or when you feel lost. It can also bring back memories that you have forgotten and create new ones. Hi everyone, Adrian from Audio Accents Canada. Uh, we're doing our continuation of Audio 101. Today it's on the uh, topic of amplification. So this is CC to my left. Uh, we've got Jerry and Tristan monitoring the cameras and the audio. So, uh, CC, why don't you go ahead? All right, before we begin, I saw this comment on our last video. It says that I shouldn't printing out so much paper. And there we go. I got a tablet today that's just for you. And okay. so let's get to the interesting part. All right, Adrian, let's recap. What do amplification, am amplification include? Okay, so if, for those of you who haven't seen our past video, we talked about uh, Audio 101 on a high level and what uh, amplification means. There are basically three categories of amplification. There's a receiver, which is uh, this unit over here. And basically a receiver includes the following uh, components. You have a tuner, like, just like your AM and FM tuner in your car. Um, in most receivers today, you also have a streamer, which is basically the digital equivalent today of a receiver, uh, of a tuner. Then you have the preamp section, which is the device that allows you to switch between your music sources. So let's say you have a, a CD player, a turntable, um, a streamer, and something else. So you need to be able to select between these different music sources. And then finally, your volume control. So that's the preamp section. <clears throat> And then finally, you have the amplifier section. So the amplifier section basically boosts the signal and then sends it to the speakers so that you can hear the music from the speakers. So that's the uh, receiver. The um, integrated amplifier removes the tuner and the streamer. So basically, all you have is volume control, um, source selection, and the amplifier. And then finally, you have a pure power amplifier, which is basically the device that gets the signal and makes it bigger. So those are the three components for the uh, amplification. So what are the pros and cons of each of them? OK, so the pros, all things being equal. So let's say, for example, we're looking at a brand like Yamaha. Mm -hmm. So uh, all things being equal, Yamaha, when they make a receiver, it would be the most affordable of all the different components because you have everything in one box. So when you only have one box, you only have to pay for one box. You only have to pay for one power supply effectively and all the parts inside. Whereas when you start separating everything out into separate tuners, separate streamers, separate preamp and separate amplifier, you have to pay for all these multiple components. And so it starts getting, getting more expensive. Um, the other thing that's also interesting about the pro of a receiver is that <clears throat> most receivers today also have a DAC built in. So again, a DAC is basically a digital to analog converter. It takes a digital signal and converts it into analog so that we can hear it. So you've got the DACs built in. And then in, in, in almost every case of receivers today, uh, especially home theater receivers, you have multiple channels so that you can drive your front, left, center, right speakers, and then you have your surround speakers as well. So you get a lot for your money in a receiver. Um, yeah. So. so last time you mentioned that when we separate all of these parts, we get a better sound. Yes. Why is that? Um, again, all things being equal. So, for example, if Yamaha were to make <coughs> uh, separate components, like let's say a preamp and an amplifier, right. um, they have the ability and opportunity to use better parts, use a dedicated power supply for the preamp section and a dedicated power supply for the amplifier section. <coughs> And of course, in most cases, when they are making separates like a preamp and amp, it's usually targeted for a higher end audience. And so they will also, in many cases, make it nicer looking, perhaps use better volume controls and so on. So it will cost more, but it will also be nicer. So is it necessary to get the preamp and amplifier from the same brand, same company? Uh, that's a good question. No, it's not necessary. Um, certainly, over the years, some companies are known more for, for example, their pre-amplifiers than their amplifiers and vice versa. Some, uh, some companies are really known for their amplifiers and maybe not as well known for their pre-amplifiers. So um, it is not necessary. Having said that, it's always a good idea to start 
um, by auditioning the components from the same company first and see if you like it. And then if you're not sure that you like it, then substitute and with the help of your dealer, uh, try different things. Okay. So any more pearls of? Uh, yes. One last thing. Um, typically separate components like an integrated amp or a separate preamp and amplifier will oftentimes give you more power and more current and that will allow you to control and drive your speakers better. If you, for example, like to play your music loud, a lot of times a receiver may not be the best choice, especially if you need more power. So separates can give you so that. So like more dynamics. More dynamics. When you have more power, think of a car. Right. When your car has a big engine with a lot of horsepower, it can get up to speed very quickly, whereas a small engine will take longer to get to that same speed. And then at that speed of, let's say, a highway speed of 100 kilometers an hour or 60 miles an hour, um, it's working very hard to maintain that speed, whereas a big engine gets up there, no issues whatsoever. That makes a lot of sense. So that's a lot of goodies. <laughs> what about the negatives? <coughs> yes. Any negatives? Any yeah. cons? So as I mentioned earlier, um, with separates, it costs more because it costs more to make it. So you have more boxes to pay for, more parts inside. And again, typically, all things being equal, the same manufacturer is targeting a higher end audience. And so they will tend to cost more. Um, the other thing is that uh, with separates, especially with a preamp and amplifier, you will need more space. So if you are space constrained, you um, um, separates, uh, you'd have to think about that, yeah. Is it possible to stack them on yes. top of each other? Yes, you space? can stack it, but be careful. Right. Um, you always have to be mindful of heat and ventilation. Mm. If everything is going into an enclosed cabinet with a door and you close the door and you like to play your music loud, it will get hot inside that cabinet. And if the heat is not evacuated efficiently, your electronics may shut down. And, and in some um, extreme cases, it can damage your speakers and the electronics. So just be careful of that. If, if, um, if you're not sure, uh, touch the electronics at the level that you're playing at and see how hot it is. If it's getting pretty hot, um, then open the doors or relocate the electronics. So ideally, do we have the electronics in the middle and then the speakers on the side? Uh, in an ideal situation, you want to keep your wiring as short as possible. So if that means putting the electronics in between the speakers, mm -hmm. do that. Uh, so you can typically run, say, an eight-foot pair of speaker cable from the electronics to the speakers if the electronics are in the middle. But if, let's say, the electronics are off to the sidewall and then the speakers are in front of you, you might have to run 15, 20, 30-foot pair of speaker cables. Uh, so uh, again, everybody's situation is a little bit different. Um, whenever in doubt and you can manage it, put the electronics in the middle. Any other tips in terms of amplifications? Um, yes. Um, so this is jumping a little bit ahead, um, but um, you want to make sure that your amplifiers, uh, whether it's a receiver or integrated or separate preamp and amp, make sure that the amplifier's power is sufficient uh, for your speakers that you like. So uh, in the case of a speaker, one of the uh, specifications that they'll give you is impedance. So the speaker's mm -hmm. impedance might be rated at, say, 4 ohms, which is a very common number. So 4 ohm is relatively low. You want to make sure that your receiver or your amplifier is rated for 4 ohms. A lot of times it might say 6 ohms or 8 ohms. So 6 and 8 are higher than 4 it means that it is not an ideal match for your speaker. You want to make sure that your amplifier says four ohms and then a certain number of power, uh, 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 power wattage. So let's say it might say 50 watts into eight ohms and it might say 60 watts into four ohms. So make sure that it does say four ohms if your speaker is a four ohm speaker. Now, if your speaker is eight ohms and your receiver says 50 watts into eight ohms, then it does have the matching capability. It still doesn't mean that it can play loud enough Enough for you, but it just means that it will match. So that's one thing to watch out for. Okay, what about, oh, yeah, for turntable. Yes. Do we need a phono <clears throat> stage? Yes, that's a very good question. Um, if you like to play records, uh, make sure that your receiver or your integrated amp or your preamplifier has phono capability. So one way you can check is on the front where the input selection knob is, it says phono. Um, now, sometimes it'll say phono slash auxiliary or a phono slash line. 
In that case, more often than not, it doesn't actually accommodate a phono signal. A phono signal is a very, very low signal. The, the signal coming out of your turntable is very, very low compared to a CD or a streamer. So it needs to be amplified. So if the receiver or your integrated amp does not have a phono stage, it cannot do it properly. Uh, a phono stage also takes the signal and re-equalizes it. Again, we'll talk about that another time. So one way to know for sure is number one, check with the receiver, uh, the manufacturer, check with the website or the dealer. And the other way is that if you turn the unit around on the back of it, if it has phono capability, there should also be a, 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 a nut um, that you can connect your turntables um, ground connection to. Um, either uh, uh, Jerry or Tristan will show you a picture of that. Um, um, and also, most budget turntables will come with a cartridge that is what we call a moving magnet. And make sure, again, that your preamplifier says moving magnet, not moving coil. So there are two very different kinds. Make sure it says moving magnet to match the cartridge of your turntable. All right, so that's a lot of information today to throw at you guys. Too much. <laughs> <laughs> too much. All right, so thank you for watching and uh, joining us at Audio 101 Part 3. We will continue to make more interesting content to share with all of you. And if you have any questions, any suggestions of future videos, please comment below. And uh, that's it for now. That's right. We'll right. see you again next time. Right. Adrian from Audio Excellence, CC, Tristan, and Jerry. We'll talk to you next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Right. Bye.